Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You are watching Comic Con Africa 2020. Unfortunately, this is our final interview, but it's going to be a great one because we have the amazing Tyler Ash. Hi. Hey, how are so you doing? So good to be here. Thank you for. I'm well. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. Very well. Thank you for giving us your time. Oh my gosh, I'm 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 so thrilled to be here. The only thing that would be better is being there in person. <laughs> totally. Have you been to South Africa before? No, I really, really want to. It's top of my list. So Sweet. hopefully, hopefully someday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'd love to have you. Yeah. Maybe next year. Yes. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> so what what piqued your interest in acting? Like how did you get involved in, in acting? So I was kind of a nerd in high school, and I uh, I thought I was just going to go be a lawyer or you know something like that. And um, I actually had a teacher who was encouraged me to get in, involved in a drama class, which I just did, thinking, oh, this is just another activity I'll do, like you know all the activities I do. And I really, it's not just that I liked it because I like doing a lot of things. We all like doing a lot of things, but I found it really challenging in a way that would, that like really piqued my interest. Right. So I, I don't know. I was, I was intrigued kind of in the way where like, if you meet someone super interesting where you're like, Oh, I think maybe we're going to get married. And that's how I felt <laughs> like when I, when I <laughs> um, first like tried acting, I was like, I'm not very good at this, but I, I like want to be better at it. And I think there's like a nut to crack here. So um, yeah. And then from then on out, my, uh, my academic aspirations kind of <laughs> went out the window. <laughs> but what yeah. was that moment um, with acting where you felt like this could be your career? That's a good question. Um, I sort of, you know, I started doing plays and um, I did this program actually at Carnegie Mellon when I was 16. And they have a really uh, interesting, pro it's called a pre-college program, which kind of gives you a sense of, you know, what it takes to audition, which I'd never auditioned for anything before and gets you ready to, to think about going to college, to, go, to going to a, a acting conservatory. Right. Um, and while I was there, I, I just sort of felt like, oh, this is something I, I'm interested in going down that route. Again, I'd been doing like a million activities, you know, very academic. And I thought, oh, I am interested in like focusing my efforts kind of on one thing, at least for my time during university yeah. um so then from there i mean universities are, was like acting school is a very strange <laughs> wonderful but strange thing and while i was there i um you know even though i had a lot of feelings and it was it was it was difficult uh in, in a certain sense i i had a, a sense that oh there's a story that I think I'm uniquely positioned to tell, and I want to make a career of this in what, however that looks, which I did not know at, at the time, <laughs> and still don't really know to be honest. But um, <laughs> you know, on on we go. <laughs> with with your role in DC Legends of Tomorrow, um, you smash stereotypes. Is that something that you set out to do, or you just kind of found yourself in this position? Um kind of both you know uh it, it's something that like pretty early in my career like i would i would get auditions for parts that i found like really offensive to be honest um you know and, and this was i i guess i graduated college it had been a few years after 9 11 but it was very clear that the that 9 11 had influenced the narratives of media at that point and of storytelling so as you can imagine, the, the things I was getting were, you know, if it wasn't like straight terrorist, it was like terrorist ad adjacent. It was the the wife, yes. the mother, you know, yes. something, the daughter, something like that. A lot of a lot of things like that, which, you know, from the beginning, I knew that's not in what I'm interested in. But I did fall into, you know, I wouldn't say traps, but they I did fall into situations where looking back, like I would never say yes to that kind of work now. Yeah. But at the time I was, you know, just trying to, to trying to pay my rent, trying to <laughs> get experience. And, um, you know, yeah, I mean, some of it is like truly, truly cringe, but 
anyways, it, it became clear to me fairly early on that this is going to, this is just on my plate. It just is because of how I look, because of where I'm from. I'm an immigrant. I was born in another country. Um, this is actually like the the burden that I sort of happily carry. This is this is like what I owe my ancestors, actually, um, as an immigrant in America. And it and it's from there, it's just become more and more important to me. I think, especially in America, really everywhere, but representation influences people so much. And right. you know, everywhere in the world now, we watch so we just take in so much media, you know, and there's, there's a Netflix, there's so much streaming, there's so much content. And um, what we see there, it really influences people. And it especially influences people who are maybe not exposed, like in the case of Legends of Tomorrow, they're not exposed to a Muslim American. They've never met a Muslim. Uh, right. They don't even know what that means. Or if they do, they have connotations of, um, again, sort of, terrorist etc um so yeah it's 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 actually kind of very much become part of part of my own personal mission as an actor as an artist as an activist um to to, to not to be very thoughtful about the choices i make in my own career but when i when i do take on um really any role but especially these roles where traditionally they've been represented in um stereotypical ways it is my job to do the research to to find the nuance to create the humanity in that person so right. that again that person who's never met you know person x uh will have just like a, a little bit hopefully a, a different um idea in their mind right on um, so right yeah. on <laughs> definitely and I, and I totally agree with you people are very exposed to what they see on the computer screens or the televisions. So there is some sort of responsibility yeah. that you do have for who you are and where you come from. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and like you're in their you're in their living rooms, you know? Yeah, like that's yeah. an intimate sorry, you're on your phones now. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But... <laughs> Definitely. And some for some people that's that could be the only experience with a p person X, you know? So yeah, totally yeah. right on. How I to, <laughs> how was it acting with all the visual effects? Do you, when when acting and using visual effects, do you have that? Are you told that before a scene is shot? Are you told like, okay, that's where the tree's gonna be, or whatever? It's good. Um, how much do uh, you know? Usually, yeah. Usually, there's like a tennis ball. <laughs> <laughs> there's just a tennis ball and they're like this is a really scary monster and he's attacking you and there's some slime and you're like oh okay um yeah i mean that was that was definitely with with uh legends of tomorrow that was a new experience i had not i had not ever done anything uh in the superhero world uh previously and i certainly hadn't done much with special effects but i remember one of my I think it was my first week of working. I saw um, my castmate Brandon Routh, uh, who plays the uh, Adam Ray Palmer, and he was in his full suit, you know. Um, and at some point, I just saw him like jump up like two inches from the ground and then run off, run out of frame. And I was like, "Sorry, what just happened?" <laughs> and everybody like very casually was like, "Oh, he just he flew away." <laughs> <laughs> Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I was, I, you know, I have this, the, my power on this show is wind and I used to have this amulet and now it's on my arm, but uh, I had this like giant uh, necklace, which I had to touch and then like wind would come out of my hand. And I felt so self-conscious about it at first, but after the thing happened with Brandon, I was like, <laughs> like just very casual. <laughs> like, okay, this is what we're doing. Did, did you have any idea that the show would become such a success? Well, you know, I I uh, came in during the third season where, you know, the show had kind of started to change in its second season. It was, it was very different than what it had been in its first season. And I think really in the third season, we found the wonderful, strange direction that we were always supposed to, to be in. And it's been, it's been actually really, um, one of the most wonderful parts of the show is like when you, when you meet people and we have such great fans who like get what we're doing because it's not, um, 
I, I don't think there's anything like it on television. It is a very special brand of uh, kind of offbeat superhero, very heart centered, but wacky. And like we, we go there, we sort of, you know, we say jump the shark. We've jumped the shark so many times at this <laughs> point, but our, our audience, uh, you know, our fans seems, seems to kind of go with it. And, and that's been, that's been really great. Right. Um, during uh, during lockdown, uh, so so many things have happened for everyone. Um, I'm sure you're spending more time with family and everything. How were how were your parents? How were your folks or your family? The people around you? How were they when you took when you took on this acting career? Because there's that feeling you had within yourself, and then okay, there's an announcement like this is what I'm doing. Um, are they cool with it? Were they cool with it? with it from the beginning or did they see a little bit of success and then like, okay, she's made the right decision. <laughs> um, well, you know, I, I have spent a lot of time with my parents uh, during the quarantine, um, which has actually been really wonderful because I don't live close to my parents. And when the lockdown started, I was like, I'm, I'm going to go be with my parents. And it's, it was sort of this like gift that was given to me of like four months of time living in the same house as my mom and dad, which was really um, lovely. And I, I think about it now that I'm away from them, I think about it all the time. Like what a, what a strange gift in the midst of so right. much hardness, you know, that, that we've all been going through. But um, to answer your question, uh, I just have like, cool parents. I, I, it's sort of, I, I feel like I kind of go against the typical like American immigrant tale where the parents want the kids to be engineers or yes. doctors or whatever. And I just happen to have parents who uh, are super dope and uh, really uh, care about art and always have. So, I mean, I completely feel the pressure to succeed in order to, um, you know, honor the sacrifices that my parents made and, and the, the hardships that they had in, in, in immigra immigrating to America. But like in terms of being an artist, like I think they're pretty psyched about it. Like I'm sure my mom is watching right now. Like she <laughs> is a fan, and I love her for it. And yeah, they're they're they've just been kind of a dream, and, and I feel I feel lucky because I I know that's that's not always the case. Right, that's awesome. <laughs> Hi, mom. <laughs> if you watch it. Hi, mom. <laughs> <laughs> you, um, so so that's pretty cool. Do you have do you have siblings of your own? I don't. I'm an only child. Oh wow! So they, all the cards yeah, yeah. are on you. <laughs> They've been everything. I know. I mean, honestly, if I was a parent, I would have been like, "Yo, my only child, can you please not go into acting?" If I ever have children, I will be like, "Please, anything but acting, really." Uh, we have a couple. It's hard. I'm sure. I'm sure it's difficult, and I'm sure you've, like, I've spoken to quite a few people over the weekend, and. Um, most people say there's a lot of no's to that yes, to that mm. one yes. And yes, yes. I, I don't know if you care to share, was, was there a period where you're like, damn, I should go study? <laughs> or, oh, like I still sometimes think I should go study. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. I mean, I don't know if it's if every actor feels this way, but I certainly feel like every job is going to be my last, right. you know, it's because, because it is such a hard journey to get to, if you, if you are lucky enough to, to be employed for any period of time, it is such a grind to get there that for me anyways, I'm, I'm still like very open <laughs> to other career possibilities. <laughs> we have, look, we have a couple of fans who have asked, you, asked questions. Great. You cool with it? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Sweet. Oh, Jess would like to know, what was your favorite out outfit in Legends? Legends of Tomorrow. Okay, um, oh, there's a lot, but I, I actually, I think the one that was my favorite because it kind of surprised me was, um, when we've done it a couple times, is the like punk outfit because again as I mentioned total nerd in like high school and I suddenly was wearing like you know the, like the dark eyeliner and like the ripped like fishnets and whatever and I was like oh my gosh I could have been this person <laughs> and I I wasn't I was a nerd but like this feels like my body's like not used to being in like cool clothes like this so that one was just sort of 
fun to um, sort of like feel, you know, feel what that that um, made me feel like. Right. I'm I'm sure that's something you really like. And you you're a lot in stage productions, right? Yeah, I have done a lot of theater. Yeah. And what what do you prefer? Because they're two totally different worlds. Um, they are totally different worlds. Um, I, you know, I started in theater, so in a, in a way, it's it is actually like my first love. So I think it will always be my first love. Um, I really miss it. I was I was actually rehearsing a play when the shutdown happened, and we were, we were about to open that play. So um, I, I actually really really miss theater. Um, and I and I feel scared about like when theater is going to come back, but I hope when it does, I can I can be part of it you know right another question oh i think his name is kiri kiri is asking what type of role or genre would you like to see yourself in um i feel like this will never happen but i'm just gonna put it into the universe I I just really love like um like Southern America like just like that kind of like drawly like I mean look at me like it probably will never happen but who knows who, who knows? knows just like kind of like Southern Gothic um you know almost even like a Western kind of vibe I think I'm actually describing like Westworld but something like that <laughs> is, is there any more yeah. Is there any movie you watched growing <laughs> up um, with an actress with, which made you want to pursue acting? Where you, where you didn't just watch it as a movie anymore and you thought, oh, I can see myself there. Yeah, I mean, it's embarrassing to say, but I feel like I was doing that even before I knew I wanted to be an actor, where I would be watching movies and like really, not just like feeling the feelings that I think most of us do when we see a movie crying or whatever, like I thought I was the person and I would kind of be like sitting in my seat acting it. I'm sure if you could see me, you'd be like, what is happening? Um, I can't think of a, a specific movie, but, you know, I'm I'm a child of the 1990s. So there were just, you know, like the Julia Roberts, like there was like a real like rom-com kind of world um, at that time that, um, you know, I, right. I totally thought, oh, my God, that's me. These white people are all me. <laughs> I, I remember watching Rocky and after that, like, trying to drink raw eggs. I was like, yo, that's me. Oh, no. <laughs> that is me. <laughs> Nothing happened, but, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Just wasted eggs. <laughs> yeah. Just really, really gross. <laughs> no, it is horrible. But Rocky did it. No, my. <laughs> um, <laughs> He's thriving. <laughs> walking around the house screaming, Adrian. Uh, we haven't, we haven't. Oh, my God, much. amazing. <laughs> Another question mm -hmm. for you, Tyler. Uh, Muhammad asked, do you relate to the old or new Zari in Legends of Tomorrow? I relate more to the old Zari. I call her Zari 1.0. Um, I, I relate more to her. I think she's sort of closer to who I am as a person. Uh, but I also love Zari 2.0. I, I think she's a hoot. Um, she's she's harder for me to kind of uh, access in some ways, but as a, as an actor going into the fourth year of our show, I'm all about being challenged at this point. So I'm my my challenge is actually because I feel like the consensus in general is that people love sorry 1.0 more than 2.0, but I, I've made it my goal this year to make people love 2.0 just as much so we'll see if i succeed <laughs> do, you, do you see yourself in this character in 2.0 um yeah like do you feel I... like do you feel like it was a stretch or do you, do you see a bit of a bit of yourself you know there's aspects of 2.0 like she's a very like i i describe her kind of as a um you know influencer kardashian adjacent kind of thing and i think if you live in our world today and you're on social media you there's some part of you that understands that thing uh even yeah. though i i kind of hate it and fight against it um so yeah in terms of that i i very much understand the part of her that feels like she needs to present 
um, you know, a facade to the world that maybe isn't actually who she is, you know, not, not that I, I mean, I try not to do that, but you know, we all like, there's these, there's these weird sort of online identities that we all have now and people see, you know, this very edited version of your life and that part of it, I, I, I relate to, I mean, she is that on steroids. Um, but I, I, I get it. I, I get that it's sort of like the, the new defense mechanism. If you know, I, I look at it um, for her in in that respect. Right. Have another question. Oh, Ritz would like to know who is your role model. Oh gosh, there's um, there's a lot. Like when I think about when I think about actors, I think about actors who um, have not only are accomplished, like I think about Meryl Streep, Meryl is just always uh, there as, as just someone who's who's incredible. But I also think of actors like Viola Davis, who I just so respect how she um, is an incredible artist. Uh, she's also been, um, you know, as a black woman fighting for social justice throughout her career and pushing the boundaries in the ways uh, that she can. And she's also, I think like really politically active as a, as herself, as a human being. So um, I really, I, I, I look up to those, those kind of artists uh, who are not like just staying in the lane of being an actor. Um, and then, I mean, uh, rest in peace uh, just because it, it just happened like I, I think about uh ruth bader ginsburg who who just passed and you know these women who i think the theme of like my role models in general are are people who created paths where there weren't uh right. ones before and um and i you know i have a tiny glimpse of how hard that is uh but when i think about women who did it 40, 50, not just women, but 40, 50, 60 more years ago, it, it's, uh, I'm, I'm just sort of in awe of that. And, and when I feel down, which, you know, it's hard not to sometimes these days, um, with everything that's happening in the world and what's happening with, uh, our political system in, in America, that gives me strength because sometimes I'm like, it's, it's a, we're all doomed. There's we're doomed, you know, and that gives me strength. And that gives me hope because there have been people before me who have been fighting for a long time. Right. And it is up to me to, to, to do my little part of it, to, to continue on, on the path that they've, they've started, you know, right on. no, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um, another question. Oh, somebody would like to know who's your favorite character from Frozen. <laughs> I, um, I, okay, I so... <laughs> also... Isn't there, like... It's been a while, and to be honest, I have not seen Frozen 2. I hear it's great. I, I, I should have watched it, honestly, during quarantine at some point. Um, isn't there, like, an animal? Isn't there, like, a... Like, is he? What is he? Like a goat? You don't know either. We're this is, we're really letting down this fan. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, Frozen. Yeah, I, Frozen. They're all great. <laughs> all the characters in Frozen. They're all my favorite. What What is What is one of your favorite animated movies? Oh, I I think my okay. I, there's two that popped into my head just now. I love Wall-E. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love um, Inside Out. Inside Out. Have you seen that one? Yeah, yeah. It's yes, I have seen Inside Out. Yeah, that's awesome. I I loved that one. It just I thought it was such a smart way, not just to talk to kids, but to talk to all of us about how we have to let ourselves feel our feelings and that it's okay. Right. Um, I thought it did it in a really beautiful way. Totally. Yeah. It was. It was like you said. It was delivered to us in the perfect way, especially using all the different social media stuff. And yeah. Uh, yeah. You, yeah, yeah. you mentioned that you're not really that into social media. It's, it's a, it's a complicated is, relationship. Is it uh, the reason, do you feel like you need a break because you're in the public eye or is it just not your thing? Um, it's complicated. I, I am a, a very private 
person. I'm an, I'm an introvert. So in, in that way, uh, social media is, is sort of challenging for me. Uh, I, I'm, I'm really careful about what I put on there. Like I never put my close family member, like there's, there's certain, there's certain things that are sort of sacred to me that I, I, I don't think belong in that space, just my own, uh, for my own sort of comfort. Um, but also like social media, I mean, social media is great because it lets you connect to people you would have normally never normally connected to. I care about a lot of things and it's a great way to, uh, you know, s- sort of spread the, a message or something you care about or an, an issue that you, you want more people to know about. So in so it, it is a kind of love hate, but it can become all encompassing, which I think all of us um, experience to a certain degree where it's like, how much time have, am I spending on this? Right. Um, I, I think it's for me, it's about how do I exercise moderation with a thing that has been designed to keep me there for hours and hours and hours. So that's that's hard. It's, it is kind of like a drug, you know. Right. No, I, I recently saw that documentary on Netflix, and and I <laughs> saw myself throughout the documentary. The part was like, "That's ridiculous." It's like, "Oh, that's me." <laughs> so, yeah. I know. I have... Yeah, yeah. That documentary was was a wake up call, I think, for a lot of people. But again, we're all so, we're so connected to it, so it's right. it's hard. It's hard to like. I don't think any one of us getting off social media is going to 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 change anything i think like those the social media those platforms have to be regulated by someone bigger than you and me you know totally i found it funny that after people watched it they went on twitter to talk about it so i was like well done guys (laughs) my favorite is when people were like i watched that documentary now i'm coming to social media to let you know that i'm getting off social media (laughs) okay (laughs) um do you have any advice out there for for young ladies or just young people in general um, with pursuing their dreams, with everything that's happening out around the world, um, like you said, I think it becomes a bit much, especially with lockdown. And, and we before, without lockdown, there were things happening, but we've had to face things in the past six months, which felt, felt a bit daunting at times. Um, do you have any advice, things that keep you going during these stressful times? Yeah, I, um, I think in terms of the lockdown stuff, it's a, it's about figuring out what feeds you, um, maybe literally, but figuratively, um, you know, read whatever it is, you know, we're all, we're physically separate in a lot of cases right now, but figuring out how to still connect and, and to do it, um, do it directly, like not through social media, because I think social media has taken um, the place of feeling like, oh, I'm with people. And actually, I think calling a friend or FaceTiming with a friend or with your mom or, you know, whoever makes you feel who's who's um, giving you energy rather than taking energy for you. I think just in terms of like surviving this time, which has been hard in new and unexpected ways um for me anyways uh that i have found helpful um and just in terms of like you know young people like you are our future um i really really believe in the power of young people and i'm so impressed with i i feel like more and more i'm seeing younger uh younger humans like being involved in the process and being activists and being able to articulate what they care about and what's important to them and and inspiring actually the rest of us so you know i would just say like stay plugged in in a healthy way as to like what's going on in our world i know it's hard it's hard for all of us there's a lot of like really hard stuff happening but you know find what you care for care about and And then like find people that also care about it because having a group, having a community, like I I would say having a community is what I've been chasing my entire life, even when I didn't kind of know it. Like being surrounded by people again that that feed you and and then sort of like the next step is that um, you can make, you know, change happen with, you can, um, you know, make a plan with, you can, you can, you can be active together. I, you know, 
we've we all have one precious life and uh, I, I don't know about you but I'm 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 trying to do my best and I'm trying to be kind to myself when I when I fall short of my expectations but I also want I want to do all that I can do while, while I'm you know this short moment that I'm on this earth so um, I get... would say like find what you care about and like do do something about it totally and you're doing it already thank you so much trying thank you thank, thank you this is this is so lovely thank you for your time and all the best thanks and um and, and i guess you guys are at the end so congratulations <laughs> thanks so much take care bye. Right. bye bye ladies and gentlemen there's tala ash i hope you guys enjoyed that i did um guys this is the end this end for me uh we are going we're gonna go to a quick commercial break but don't go anywhere because after that, Zade will be back with the Pokemon quiz. Thank you so much for giving me your time. Thank you for spending the weekend with me. Peace and love. I'm Robbie Collins.